Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to use exception handling in C Sharp. Now, a lot of times when your C Sharp programs are running, there's gonna be certain things that can go wrong. And generally, when those situations occur, C Sharp is gonna throw what's called an exception. An exception basically just tells you that something happened in your code that C Sharp couldn't handle. And whenever an exception gets thrown, generally the program crashes. So there's a lot of situations where something might happen in the execution of the program, an exception is gonna get thrown, and then the program's gonna terminate. And sometimes you're gonna want that to happen. Sometimes when an exception gets thrown, you're gonna want the program to terminate because you're gonna to wanna to know what happened. But a lot of times, especially if you're writing a program that's being designed to run for you know months and months at a time, you're not gonna want an exception to crash the program. In other words, you're gonna want the program to be able to keep going when something wrong happens and an exception gets thrown. So I'm gonna show you guys the basics of working with exceptions. We're also gonna talk about handling exceptions and the different scenarios where an exception is gonna get thrown. Down here, I have a basic program written out. And this is a very simple program. Essentially, all it does is it gets two numbers from the user and it takes those numbers and it divides them. So you see over here, I have console.write. I'm asking them to enter a number and then I'm taking whatever they entered and I'm converting it into an integer and I'm storing it inside of this integer variable. And I'm doing that for both of these numbers. Then down here, I'm just writing out the value of dividing both numbers onto the screen. So there's two major things that we're doing here. Um, the first is we're converting this string into an integer using this convert instruction. And then down here, we're dividing the two numbers. And I'm gonna show you guys how we could actually enter in information to this program that will cause exceptions. So let's go ahead and run this. And I'm just gonna click start. So over here, I'm gonna enter a number. So why don't we enter in a five? And now I'm gonna show you guys one way that an exception could get thrown. So remember, we're dividing these two numbers and you can't actually divide a number by zero. So just by basic math rules, if we have a whole number like this, it's impossible for me to divide it by zero. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm asking the computer to do something impossible, right? I'm asking the, the computer to do something that it's not gonna be able to do and it's not gonna be able to handle. When I hit enter and I ask the computer to do this, it's gonna throw an exception. In other words, the computer is gonna be like, hey, I can't do this, like I can't divide these two numbers, so the program's gonna terminate. So you'll see when I hit enter, that this little screen goes away and this exception pops up. So it says exception unhandled, system.divide by zero exception, attempted to divide by zero. It's basically telling us what went wrong, right? It's saying, hey, you tried to divide by zero, that's illegal, you can't do that, and we can't handle that. So basically it's throwing this exception. So you can just come up here and click stop debugging and that'll make that go away. I'm gonna show you guys one other way we can break this program. So if I put a number in here like a four, that's all well and good, right? But remember, we're converting whatever is up there into a number. So if I was to type in like a G, this isn't a number, right? G is not a number, it has no numerical value. So the program isn't gonna be able to convert G into an integer even though I asked it to. So when I hit enter, another exception is gonna get thrown. This time, we're getting a format exception. It says, input string was not in correct format. In other words, we asked you to enter in a number and you entered in a character. The program can't handle that, so it breaks. That's another example of an exception. So the question becomes, what do we do about this, right? Our program keeps throwing these exceptions, so how can we handle that? Like, if the user enters in a letter instead of a number, I don't want the program to terminate, I wanna be able to do something else. Like, I wanna be able to yell at them and be like, hey, you entered in the wrong thing. I don't want the program to terminate. Or if the user tries to divide by zero, you don't want the program to terminate, you wanna tell them that they entered in an invalid number. So. If we wanna do that, we can actually do something called exception handling. Exception handling is basically the process of catching these exceptions. So we're basically gonna tell C Sharp like, hey, there's some code over here that might throw an exception. If it does, we want you to catch it. And instead of crashing, we wanna be able to handle it. And I'm gonna show you guys how we can do that. So we wanna use something called try catch blocks. So I'm just gonna type out try and open and close parentheses, curly bracket. And then down here, I'm gonna type out catch and again an open and closed curly bracket so try catch blocks work like this any code that we think is going to break the program for example the code down here we can put inside of these try blocks and if that code does indeed break the program 
then instead of the program terminating, the program is going to go down here into this catch block and it's going to execute all of the code down there. So what I want to do is take all of my risky code, in other words, all of this stuff, and I can place it inside of these try blocks. So I'm just going to paste it inside of here. So now all of this code that potentially would break the program is inside of this try block. So what I want to show you guys now that I have this catch block over here, I can just do like console.write line and over here, I'm just going to print out error. So essentially what's going to happen now is if any of this code causes an exception, we're going to come down here and print out this. So let me show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and run this program and it says enter a number. So let's do the zero one again. So now I'm going to hit zero. This should break the program. But now instead of breaking the program and causing an exception, we just print out error. So it's it's still kind of like a backup system. And what we can also do is we can get more information about the error that occurred. So I can say catch, I can make an open and close parentheses, and then I can say exception, and I can just call this E. So I'm basically saying that this catch block is gonna take an exception parameter, and we're gonna call it E. If I came over here now, I could basically print out E, and I could say E dot message. And this is going to tell me what went wrong. So now when I run my program and we can do that zero division, I'll say five divided by zero and it's going to tell me what went wrong. It's going to tell me you attempted to divide by zero. If I did the other error. So for example, if I entered in a letter like G now it's going to tell me input string was not in correct format. So it's able to catch the error that happened. And by saying exception E up here in these parentheses, we can actually get the error message just like that. So this is a really great way to kind of stop our programs from terminating. But here's the thing. There's all different types of exceptions that can get thrown inside of our programs, right? And all I have down here is one catch block. So no matter what exception gets thrown, we're always executing this same code down here. But let's say there was a situation where when the zero division error occurred, you wanted to do one thing and when the um, input error occurred, you wanted to do a different thing. Well, you can't really do that because we only have one catch block. Well, what we can do is we can actually define specific exceptions that we want to catch. So oh, down here, instead of saying exception, I can actually specify a specific type of exception that I want this catch block to catch. So before we were getting a divide by zero exception, so I can put this in here and now this is only going to catch a divide by zero exception. So if I was to run my program and we did the divide by zero, I'll say five zero, you'll see it's able to catch it. But if I was to do that invalid format, if I came over here and I said like six and then I said a G, it's not going to be able to catch that. So down here, we're getting this format exception, right? And basically it's not being caught because we didn't specify it down here. This catch block is only going to catch divide by zero exceptions. But what we can actually do is we could make another one. So I could say catch and in here, I'm just going to type in format exception. And now this is going to be able to catch any format exceptions that occur. So now I could say console dot right line. And again, we can just print out like E dot message. And so the idea is that instead of just printing out E dot message, you would do something different depending on the error that gets thrown. In our case though, we're just going to say E dot message. So now when I get that format exception, if I say like five and then G, it's going to say input string was not in correct format. So it's able to catch both of those. And that's essentially what you want to do. So what we were doing before is we just had like catch and we were just kind of catching any exception under the sun. Um, but now we're catching individual exceptions. And this is actually a better way to do it because we're able to account for each of these situations, right? When the user divides by zero, we could print out like, hey, you divided by zero, like watch it. If they have a format exception, then we could do something else. Like maybe we could prompt them to enter that input again, or you know, we could do something else. And so being able to have these multiple catch blocks is extremely useful. There's also one more thing I wanna show you guys, which is called finally. So down here, I could just type out finally, and I'm gonna make an open and closed curly bracket. And any code that we put inside of this finally block is always going to get executed no matter what, right? No matter what it's going to get executed. So for example, up here, this code, like if the user enters in an invalid number, like if they enter in a letter here instead of a number, this code won't get executed, right? Because we threw the exception and we broke and we came down here. But sometimes in your programs, even if 
something throws an exception, you're always gonna wanna execute something and that code can go down here in the finally block. But you don't always need the finally block, that's kind of uh, optional. So really this is just how we can handle different errors in our program. And there's a bunch of different exceptions. If you just go online and uh, you know search for like C-sharp exception list, you'll find a bunch of these different exceptions. And this really just makes your programs more durable. Like before, this was a very fragile program. If I entered in a letter instead of a number, like it would just crash and burn. But now we're actually able to handle all those different situations using these try catch blocks. So these are extremely useful. And anytime you have code that's a little dicey, um, especially if you're like getting input from a user, stuff like that, these can come in handy. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.